this recording. Okay, good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I think it's evening for some of us. It's afternoon, maybe morning. Uh, really excited to have you all here for our official August Presto virtual meetup. Um, if you've been on these before, you know that we do a few housekeeping slides before we turn things over uh, for the main event. So I will do those housekeeping slides as a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Allie LeClerc, if, if you don't know me. I help run the Presto open source community and, and many um, of the programs that we do with the community, including events like the Presto Meetup, as well as PrestoCon. So um, if you're not familiar, PrestoCon is our marquee in-person annual conference this year. It's going to be the first week of December. It is going to be at the Computer History Museum, which is a super cool venue in Mountain View, California. So um, if you are in the Bay Area, especially, we would love to have you. Um, even if you're not in the Bay Area, this is a really awesome event where we get the whole Presto community together. Our CFP is open. So if you are doing something with Presto, if you're using it, if you're developing on it, uh, submit a talk. We love to showcase everything that the community is up to. Uh, so I highly encourage you to, to do that. Uh, the CFP is closing very soon, I think this Friday. So uh, again, would love to have anybody submit a talk on whatever they're working on around Presto. All right, uh, one other announcement. So Presto Working Groups, we are really excited to kind of formally introduce uh, Presto Working Groups. Uh, what are working groups? Well, these are really small kind of cross-functional groups that um, work on specific areas within the Presto project. It's a really great way to meet other Presto engineers. And if you um, feel passionate about one of these areas and want to contribute, want to have a say in the roadmap, uh, join the working group. It's, um, we're really excited about these and, and they're starting to do a lot more within these functions. So that's the uh, Presto Architecture, Presto Optimizer, the Native Worker and Security. We just posted a blog on PrestoDB.io about it. So if you do wanna learn more, if you wanna join one of those groups, all the instructions on how to do that are, are in that blog. So, so check it out. Okay, uh, and last, I just have to do a plug. If you wanna speak at a future meetup, just email us or, or join the Slack channel. All right, so without further ado, we are here for now the main event. Please welcome Jay, Jay from Uber. Um, he has put a lot of work into this Redis history-based optimizer for Presto. And so I begged him to come uh, do a meetup and share more with uh, what he did and kind of how it works and go through all those technical details. So uh, Jay, I'm gonna pass it over to you and I'll just mention that we love these to be interactive. As you can tell, I try to get people to, to introduce themselves at the beginning of these things. So if you have a question, um, just feel free to pop it into the chat or even go off mute, show your face and, and ask it and it makes it for a little bit more of a lively, um, you know, two-way kind of conversation. It makes it a little bit more fun. All right, with that, I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna pass it over to you, Jay. Okay, thank you, Ellie. So yeah, I'm sharing screen. Can, can you all, all see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. So yeah, hi, hi everyone. So my name is Jay Narali. I currently work in the Presto team at Uber. And uh, the the event, uh, so this, this event, the main purpose of this event is to get you guys started with the Redis history-based optimization. So imagine in a world, if we had, you know, all the statistics or uh, statistical data or important information about things that are crucial for making decisions, right? We would be able to make such beautiful decisions. Uh, we would, all of us would be uh, optimal stock tra traders or and everything, right? So that's what happens when we give this information to a query of query engine. So using this information, using statistical information, the query engine is able to create more optimal plans. So this is an example uh, where you know his history, uh, runtime history is used to make optimal plans in future. So. I'm just going to go over and uh, show how the framework is in Presto, what we have done at Uber for you guys to uh, deploy this in your production and how we can uh, together improve this feature in Presto. So yeah, so let's get started. So a bit about me. So yeah, like I said, my name is Jay. I currently work at engineering at Uber at Presto. And I've also worked with some query engines previously like Dremio and also some databases in Yahoo Japan. So I've been working in data since around four and four to five years now, and it's been a lot of fun uh, tackling new challenges and working in data. So yeah, let's get started. So this is going to be the agenda of today's presentation. 
So first, I'll just talk about uh, optimizers, like very short, uh, talk about the HBO framework in Presto, which Meta has uh, open sourced in also very short, and then the provider that we open sourced and the learnings and the next steps. So yeah, so let's get started by, by the scale of Presto at Uber. So, so at Uber, we use Presto a lot, right? Probably we saw example, uh, we have like 20 static clusters around two regions and around 50 PB uh, SDFS data read per day, right? We are also actively increasing our Presto usage, uh, incorporating new avenues of applications like uh, Presto on Spark for low, low running batch queries and also uh, much other applications. So yeah, we're very excited to uh, contribute more to the open source in the coming uh, years. But yeah, Presto is very crucial for Uber Analytics. As you can see, we have like 7K to 10K weekly active users. Yeah, so I'll just go over the framework. So yeah, so the HBO framework that I'm gonna talk about, the, the HBO will just stand for you know, historical based optimization, which is the uh, center of this talk, right? So the, this framework was actually uh, open sourced by Meta. So Pranjal was actually the main engineer behind this and also Fei Long. So, so uh, both of these engineers have open sourced this uh, framework, which, which allows us to, you know, uh, uh, track history, uh, use of historical plan statistics and 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 uh, and else. So I'll talk in detail a little bit about uh, this framework in the coming slides. But yeah, huge thanks to them for the framework. So yeah, let's get started uh, in by by looking at query optimization, right? So like, why do we need query optimization? So you might all know know right that uh, uh, there are multiple ways of query execution. For example, this is a join. And you can see that both of these plans, which uh, generated plans can be executed with correct results, right? For example, we have a table here, we are doing some aggregations, then you're filtering the data and joining it with a table B, right? But on the right side, we are first doing the filter, then aggregate, and then join with the table B. But so in this case, uh, in most of the cases, actually, the plan, the right plan on the right is more optimal because uh, we are reducing data to, which needs to be aggregated, right? So decisions like this are made actually by the coordinator in a query optimization phase. And once the coordinator makes a plan, the, the workers uh, work on it and uh, execute it basically. So creating an optimal plan is very, very important. And also uh, that is the easiest place where you know we can make gains in uh, uh, query efficiency, query speed. So that's why, uh, I think uh, working on an optimizer is a very, very crucial for Presto too. So yeah, so let's see how the optimizers are in Presto, like just a quick overview. So, so we have a, a data structure called plan, which is basically uh, received by an engine and uh, the optimizers do some work on it and we get an execution ready plan, right? So that, and this execution ready plan can actually be executed in workers. So uh, this is what this diagram on the right-hand side uh, represents. And uh, optimizers, each optimizer is basically a list of rules. So if you if you look in the below code, so I have actually just copied Presto code. So each optimizer is a bunch of rules, right? So what, what do rules mean? So rules basically are, uh, uh, rules basically have a uh, definition uh, and if the plan, you know, this plan, uh, uh, like uh, matches the definition, the rules will do some uh, operations on it and create a new plan, right? So that's what rules are. So for example, uh, let's look at this, right? Remove redundant top end rule. So this rule basically will remove some uh, top ends which are not used. So it will have a definition saying that, you know, if a plan is of this shape, then only do some operations on it. So that's how, an optimizer in Presto works. So it is a bunch of rules and uh, we use a lot of optimizers. We try to separate rules as possible because we use something called as a heuristic optimizer in Presto. So we don't actually have a, a Volcano optimizer uh, or other cascade related optimizer. If you guys, if any of you is familiar with CalSight or other engines, uh, but uh, that's what we have in Presto. So 
Yeah, so at each point during transformation, there is just one best plan. That's what I meant by historical, I mean, uh, HEP rule. But yeah, I don't need to go into that details. So this is what optimization looks like in Presto. So uh, yeah, and there's no divisive concept of logical or physical plan, right? So a lot of other engines have uh, different plans. So this plan data structure. So a lot of teams, uh, like engines have uh, logical plans for logical operations, then they transform it for physical plan for physical operations, and then they wrap it around operators for execution, right? But in Presto, we just have a simple plan interface and we have some rules which transform the logical nodes to physical ones. For example, uh, if you are doing a union operation, there are some uh, rules to transform that union, which is a logical uh, node to exchanges, which is a physical node so that the uh, executor knows how to execute, right? So just an example. So this is how the optimizer framework looks like in Presto in general. So yeah, so let's look at a little bit into like uh, some rules. So, so yeah, so like I mentioned in the previous slide, optimizer is a list of rules and these rules do transformation on the plans, right? So for example, if the plan is on the leftmost side is the actual plan, uh, if, if the leftmost side is the actual plan, uh, some rule will do some transformation and transform it to a light rightmost plan, right? And this uh, plan might also get transformed to a, a, a more, more better plan. But uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, we, ju we just have an historical optimizer and we don't actually you know, uh, use cost in an optimizer level. So uh, the rules, uh, individual rules make decision on what transformation to do, right? So in this plan, you know, the rule is responsible for transforming it to the next plan. So how do you make the transformation decision, right? How do you know that this plan is better than this plan? All right, exactly. So that's why we, we need some metrics to do that. And that's what we define as a plan cost, right? So the cost of a plan basically is a metric by which we can compare two plans. So it's just a vector of estimated CPU, memory, and network so that we know that, yeah, the one plan is better than the other, and the plan is less, I mean, not more, not, not more efficient than the other, something like that. So this vector is converted into a weighted scalar, right? Because of, of course, vector also can't be compared properly unless you convert to a scalar, right? And that and this weighted scalar, uh, the weights can be adjusted for your deployment on your necessity, necessities, right? For example, if you have a lot of compute heavy queries, you might use a more, like you might give more preference to CPU estimations or less, less preference to memory estimations, something like that. So once we have a weighted scalar, uh, we, we know how to compare plans. So that's what a plan cost is for. It's just a way of comparing plans. So yeah, so some, some rules use this cost internally to choose the best plan, right? So, so one of the rules will say, okay, if the plan shape looks like this, I will match it. Okay, once I match it, now I will do some transformations, right? So it will use cost, plan cost internally, you know, create a bunch of, uh, candidate plans and then choose the best plan. So some of the examples, uh, some of the rules which do that actually in code are these four. So one is uh, determine join distribution type rule in Presto, right? So this is basically responsible for choosing a broadcast join or hash partition join. Also also the join ordering, uh, join side ordering, I mean, which should be the build side, which should be the pro side of a hash join. Same for semi joins, uh, the reorder joins also, like I mentioned, uh, just creates a lot of plans, candidate plans, you know, expands the plan space and then uses plan cost to choose the best plan with cost. Also, we also have a runtime reorder joint sides rule, uh, which actually do, does some replanning uh, during execution. So, uh, but this only works for simple table scan uh, level uh, operations, I think. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. And I would like to spend some time uh, work like focusing on this in future, but I haven't really worked on it yet. So yeah, if someone is interested, please look into this. It's very sounds very fun. So yeah, uh, so yeah. So I'm just going to give you an example of how you know optimization helps, and how in this particular case, you know, historical statistics about plans helped us make better decisions, right? So the query on the leftmost side was without statistics. It was ran just a normal query. And this one is uh, 
25 in TP series data sets. This is just like a benchmark of, uh, of queries, you know, to judge uh, engine performance. So, so in this uh, query, if you look uh, at the plan, uh, there's a join present here, right? And uh, on the left side of the join, I can see like 150 rows. On the right side of the join, I can see like 75, 74.5 GB of uh, data or 2.8 billion rows, right? So this is the query as written by the user themselves, right? No optimization has been done because we have no information presumably about the data, right? Now, on the right side, whereas you see on the right side, this same join is replicated over here, right? And if you see, uh, it just had the, the right side of the plan has 150 rows. And this actually is the 2.88 billion rows uh, plan. So what happened was in second run, this got switched, which means that the right side of the build got 150 rows. So actually, uh, if, if some of you are familiar with joins, you will all know that in a hash join, the right side is uh, in, 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 a, in a memory, right? This is distributed over a lot of executors and uh, um, all most of the data, all of the data re uh, resides in memory. And then the probe side is streamed to the executors holding the hash table on the build side, right? So ideally we want the right side to be as small as possible. That's what we did here, right? In a better plan. We have the right side of this join as small as possible. And also, uh, if some of you are familiar with exchanges, you know that uh, these stages are, are exchanging data, right? Sending data from one stage to another over network. So this, the, the executors executing this and the executors executing this might be completely different and they are sending like data over the uh, network. So in this case, once we switch the plans, uh, you see that, uh, uh, the right side was became smaller, which is like 150 rows, and that was uh, good in one scenario. But also, uh, this also allowed us to do a broadcast join instead of a hash partition join shown here. So, so the one since the 150 rows, which is now the right build side, was uh, very less, we could just broadcast this to all the executors doing the scan itself, rather than you know streaming data to the join to a different join uh, stage. So that's how we. In this right plan, we we increased a uh, plan of uh, like query efficiency by by two two factors, right? One is by choosing the right build side of the join, and the second one is to avoid do the broadcast join instead of a hash partition join. So, in this uh, both the plans uh, we used actually in historical stats to do so. So. So th this join has a left side and the right side plan nodes, right? So each plan will have plan nodes. That's the terminology that I'm going to use. And uh, what we actually did was after execution, we uh, looked at this plan nodes, this right side plan node, the left side plan node, and we uh, populated some uh, statistics about this in, in our store. So now we know that, okay, this plan is, you know, has 2.7 KB of data, right side has GB of data. So the next time we run the same query, we now have statistics about these plan nodes, these sub plans, right? So that's that's what allowed us to make better decisions in this case. So this is an example, I know, an overview of this optimization as a whole, like historical optimization as a whole, uh, wherein we used some plan nodes, uh, did some, uh, you know, uh, populated a stat store, stored some statistics, used those statistics and created much better plan in the second iteration. So I'm just going to go over the uh, framework in general. You know, this is what was what is developed by, by Meta and Presto. So I'm just going to go over the fr framework a little bit um, in the next few slides, and then I'm going to show how you can you know actually use this in your Presto deployments. So yeah, so this is going to be the framework in Presto. So in this diagram, yeah, it sounds. A, Seems very complicated, but I'll just explain. It's a very simple diagram. So on the left side, if you look, this DAG, if you see this DAG, it's just a query lifecycle DAG, right? So the user submits SQL, the the uh, coordinator does analysis, it does planning, like, like we talked in the previous slides. It does some scheduling. Uh, it executes it in different workers. It gets back the results and dumps, does some stuff. Right, this is what the left DAG represents. In the center, I have just added uh, the opti uh, planning phases that we talked about in the previous slides. So list of optimizers, which transform the plan data structure, and then 
uh, send it for scheduling. And on the rightmost side, I have the external where is store, which is a store, uh, which is which is uh, stored externally, basically. So yeah, so this is the framework in Presto, and uh, there is a optimizer called the historical statistics plan marking optimizer, which is again again the sa uh, same interface that of optimizers that we talked about. So this actually uh, fetches and caches uh, history based stats from the Redis store per query into an in memory uh, data structure. So, so th uh, this just uh, makes calls to Redis and stores all the stats that are going to be used in this query lifecycle into the local memory cache so that we don't make too many calls to Redis in the same query lifecycle, right? So there might be different cost-based rules like we talked in the previous slides, which are using this cost. So each of these rules when it's using doesn't need to go and fetch from Redis. That's why we just cast it in a local per query memory cache. So that's what this diagram represents. It's just like a overview of the framework. So in the next slide, I'm, I will just talk about how this fetch works, like how this optimizer fetches statistics and how it updates statistics, right? So yeah, let's dive into this fetch stats, like how this optimizer actually fetches stats. So uh, this optimizer also again has a plan in its input. And then it does something clever, right? So then for each plan, uh, like each sub plan of a plan, which is all again a plan, it's just a, a DAG, right? So for each plan node, it, it assigns a stats equivalent uh, plan node to the plan. So this stats equivalent plan node is very important because this is what is uh, stored throughout the other optimizers and also in execution, uh, and so that we know, we know uh, what plans, uh, what stats correspond to what plans. So, if you if you look at the previous diagram, uh, you see that uh, there are a lot of optimizers uh, doing their transformations on plans, right? So, what if you know this just fetches and caches stats, and then the plan suddenly changes? The history, the uh, plans will keep on changing after the after in the corresponding operators, right? So that's why we have a concept called the stats equivalent plan. And this plan won't change. So the previous transformations will maintain the stats equivalent plan uh, along with the uh, changed plan. So this makes sure that uh, the stats that we are fetching are used in for the same query are accurate. And also uh, they, they will be accurate in further uh, query runs, right? So that's what this optimizer does. It just assigns the stats equivalent plan so a lot of times the stats equivalent plant is just the plan itself, but sometimes when there are limits or other nodes present, it, it acts as a wrapper. There is some wrapping around, so that the information is passed around. So anyway, so now we have a plan and each sub plan has a stats equivalent plan, right? So I just look over this diagram. So this was the plan. So this node has a stats equivalent plan. This node has a stats equivalent plan and all the nodes have a stats equivalent plan. So the stats equivalent plan of this node, for example, will look like this, this sub plan, for example. So that's how we, you know, maintain the uh, stats equivalent plan in, in this optimizer. Then what we do is we canonicalize the stats equivalent plan. So basically we hash the stats equivalent plan into a, a hash. So now we have a, basically a string of uh, the information and that hash is actually uh, fetched from the meta store. So, and, and once we have that hash, we have all the statistical information of the plan. So we know how many rows are going to be in this plan, what is going to be the data size and other operations, right? So that's how this fetch works uh, in short. So, uh, let's look at how the put works, right? So yeah, so like I talked about in my previous slides, we had a query lifecycle thread. And once that thread is complete, complete we have we also have a query completion thread, which is uh, just a listener on this uh, event. And once it gets the signal that the execution is complete and it's successful, it will retrieve plan node stats from execution stats, right? So this is very crucial case. Like how does it do does that, right? Because execution actually happens in operators and in workers, right? So again, the uh, magic of stats equivalent plan come to picture, right? Because as I mentioned in the in my previous diagram, that this stats equivalent plan 
uh, is not uh, changed by further optimizers and the information is maintained uh, throughout the uh, the optimization process right so the same stats equivalent plan information is also passed to operators when they are executing so once the optim operators complete execute Called execution, we have operator level stats already. So we just need to, you know, aggregate based on their stats equivalent plan. And now, voila, we have plan node stats, right? So once we have the plan node stats, now we know how how heavy or how uh, inefficient or efficient a particular plan is. We just make a call to update the stat store, right? So this is how the framework in Presto looks like uh, as of now. Yeah, so yeah, so let's go into the provider details. So this framework that I talked on is just like a skeleton wherein you can uh, fetch fetch stats, update stats, improve your queries and things. But uh, from Uber, we have actually open sourced this provider. So basically the part which talks to the external register, you know, fetches stats, puts stats, uh, and uh, maintains all the uh, static, static, statistical information. So that's what we have uh, open source. So it's a plugin in Presto. It will be available, I think, with the next release. So it it would maintain a stateful connection with Redis. So this will only be on coordinator and maintain a stateful connection on Redis. Because as, as I mentioned, right, the coordinator is the one that does the planning process. So it's based on an open source client, it's called Lettuce. So again, uh, uh, the client is uh, also uh, has a lot of uh, optimizations like pipelining and everything. So best practices for uh, concurrency and and everything has been tested. And uh, this is has been tested in our production uh, environment. So yeah, please uh, try it out and uh, let us know if you guys have any uh, problems or or questions around this. But uh, yeah, let's see how what we will store, right? So uh, in the store, actually, we are going to store a key by a string, which is a join hash and a value of a, a data structure. So as we all know, Redis is a key value store, right? So that's why uh, the value that we are going to store will be a list of uh, last run statistics. This also will be capped, like the list size. And the size also will have some uh, row count in like each uh, run statistic will have information like the row count statistics and the tables used during the uh, runs table stats used during the runs right because for one of your runs for example let's say you have a uh, table stats available on a partition but suddenly uh, on the next partition you don't have table stats anymore right so we don't want to uh, use the same execution statistics because the plan might have changed so that's what we will store in redis uh, yeah. So how to use this, right? So first you will need to have a Redis installation in your uh, system. So once you have the Redis intro installation, you just need to configure the plugin that we uh, open sourced with some installation details. Uh, then you need to register the plugin with Presto. So this is a standard procedure of registering plugins. We have documentation available on how to do this too. Uh, but basically this would just mean putting jars uh, during the Presto deployment. And then you need to do some uh, config tuning. So, you know, you're trying to use the historical stats framework for your deployment. So you would need to tune different configurations, you know, like uh, uh, plan size, because this does some add some planning time latency, which I'll talk about later. So you will need to tune some configurations uh, like TTLs, Redis TTLs, you know, uh, Redis, uh, uh, also uh, Redis like max size that you want to store, et cetera. And then once you are done, you'll be ready for deployment. So yeah, and uh, yeah, and we have made sure that this is production ready. So this is actually deployed in some of our clusters at Uber and metrics are also available for this provider through the JMX exporter. So as you can see in this diagram, you have the uh, patch request and the fetch request latency as well as the count. And we observed a latency of around 10 microseconds per peak P90 and P99 was 105. But using the HBO framework, it does add a, a latency increase in planning time because uh, the P99 
plan hashing becomes more and more complicated when there are very, very large plans and also when there are limits uh, on implants because they make the canonicalization process much harder. So, yeah, and these were some of the results that we saw, right? So with no statistics, because that's what we want to test because a lot of our customer data has no statistic. Like most of our tables are created randomly. They have no stats information around that. So that's why we tested it on TPCDS with a mixed scale factor. And we saw uh, like it was used 15% faster, for example, uh, used 58% peak memory and also less shuffled data, like I mentioned, right? In one of the sites when we did a broadcast joint. So yeah, this was the an overview of the framework in a short. So this were the key learnings that we had, right? So one of the key learning was to enhance the OS open source interaction, right? Because there was no proper documentation about this framework. So we need to just look at the release notes properly, uh, you know, ha engage in conversations with Presto working groups, like Ali mentioned, or uh, meetings so that uh, we are, we know what is uh, going on in open source. And at the same time, uh, just keep on uh, uh, reviewing pull requests and other things. So that was one of the uh, good key uh, learnings from this project. Uh, also, uh, the next steps for us are going to be tuning more configurations and monitor the production impact of this, like what is the actual production impact that we are making. So uh, like I mentioned by tuning configs, right? So there is a configuration fact for dynamic filtering, for example, in Presto, which is off by default. But, uh, but I think uh, looking at Trino and other uh, engines, it seems like it is already production ready. Like the code used in Trino is almost the same, but it is off in Presto, right? So such small details will only be available if we keep on monitoring what is being developed in open source and turning on that configs, tuning those configs are, are going to co lead to a big increase in production once we do that. So that's what we are going to do in future. Also, we plan to work on uh, additional statistics like NDV or or maybe null count to like handle the skew problem in join. So maybe you know, during runtime, we might also uh, capture some NDV statistics and update the stats to get the information or something like that. Also, yeah, we are also going to uh, test with a mixture of column statistics with the historical ones for better join order. Because as you know, for join ordering, we are going to see a lot of unknown plans. So most of the plans generated would not have an history. So determining, uh, like estimating, uh, or, or rather comparing those plans are going to be difficult with just historical statistics. So that's what we are going to work on from over from our side. And yeah, that's all that I had to say. So thank you guys for your time and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks, Jay. That was awesome. I'm seeing some applause, some emoji applause. So great stuff. Uh, so now's the time, folks. If there's any questions, feel free to go off mute and ask, or uh, you could pop it into the chat. And while we wait to see if there are any questions, what I'm going to do is just um, at the beginning of this, I shared more about PrestoCon. So there's the link for anybody that's interested in um, uh, submitting a CFP or even registering all the uh, info is there. And then we also talked about working groups, which again, Jay touched on. So thanks for that, Jay. Here's the blog on those that kind of shows you um, how to join, what they're about and, and all the details on that. So feel free to check that out if you're interested in joining any of those. So with that, um, Jay, if you want to drop in your contact details, or I always recommend people to join our Presto Slack channel if you're not in there. This is where people like Jay hang out. Um, the community's there, the engineers that are working on Presto, everybody's there. Here's the link to join our Presto community Slack. If you're not in there, highly recommend um, you join. And, and it's a great place to answer, to ask any sorts of questions, whether you're new to Presto, just getting started, have a specific troubleshooting item that you wanna um, you know, ask the community about. It's a, it's a great resource for those kinds of things. Okie doke. All right. Well, Jay, thank you so much. This is such awesome work that you did and appreciate you. your contribution back to the community. It's just so awesome when when folks like you, um, you know, support the open source community and, and contribute back. This is really good stuff. So we appreciate it as a community. We hope everybody that joined today 
um, found it insightful and maybe even inspiring. Maybe the next one of these will be somebody on this call. Uh, we'll see a big donation or a contribution. So awesome. All right. Thanks, folks. The recording's available. Thank you. Yep. Uh, if you're in the meetup group, I will post it to the meetup group and I'll also share it in the Slack channel, Hardik. So good question. I will share the recording out after this. And I think we're good. All right. Thanks, folks. Nice seeing you. Thank stay, you. Um, well, stay up to date. We'll, we'll be doing more of these in the next few months. And um, join the Slack channel. That's where we kind of share out all the, the details of these events. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Okay.